that stress can benefit you up to a certain point. Benefit you by triggering mechanism in your body and system which are extremely powerful to preserve your body, to keep you great. Welcome to the Seamland Podcast. I'm your host Seamland and today our guest is Ori Hofmeckler. Ori is the author of The Warrior Diet, which is the first intermittent fasting book online made over 22 years ago. Basically, The Warrior Diet is one meal a day, but you're allowed to snack on some berries and nuts during the day. Ori is a pioneer in everything related to hormesis, stress adaptation and longevity. He's written multiple books, including The Warrior Diet, The Seven Principles of Stress, Maximum Muscle, Minimum Fat, and The Anti-Estrogenic Diet. Now, although Ori has been a huge influence on my own journey as an author and uh, an intermittent fasting practitioner, I do, and I do agree with the main ideas, um, I, there are still some things that we obviously disagree with, uh, and uh, it's also important to note that you know Ori isn't like an active researcher anymore. He doesn't write any more books. Uh, he hasn't done so in the past several years. And uh, yeah, there are some things that, you know, new research and new studies have, you know, talked about hormesis and intermittent fasting that aren't necessarily, you know, uh, the same as uh, his ideas. Although the main general principle of stress adaptation and hormesis, that is still like fundamentally rooted in uh, our human biology. That's why I've compiled my own ideas about hormesis and intermittent fasting in my own books, Metabolic Pathology and Stronger by Stress, that are based on the latest research. But nevertheless, it was still an honor to have him as one of the godfathers of intermittent fasting on my podcast and talk with him, uh, which uh, the first time we did was uh, five years ago. But uh, now we have another conversation. Ori, welcome back to the show. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, talked uh, that uh, the first time I had you on my podcast, which was actually one of the first episodes of the podcast, was uh, five years ago, and uh, it's been a very long time. Uh, you know, you look actually, I think, even better <laughs> than before, or, you know, still very young and uh, youthful. Uh, mind if I ask, like, how old are you right now? I'm over 70. Okay, so yeah, you look, you look excellent for your age, and uh, I think that Thank you. you are very, like, you know, still uh, fit and... Um, healthy in that sense so yeah like you as an author have been like a pretty huge influence and inspiration in terms of my interest in intermittent fasting and uh, how it relates to you know stress adaptation and uh, resilience in general so um, yeah I'm a huge fan of your books and read all of them and uh, will basically yes for people who might have not heard about uh, you before then will you know delve into all of them and, you know, funny enough, I think that you are one of the, I don't know, the first people online to even start to talk about intermittent fasting or popularize it, at least. And one of the first books, the first books that I definitely read about it. And that was definitely like over like 20 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 22 years ago. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, and uh, how long have been you doing intermittent fasting yourself? Like, when did you start? You know what? I don't even remember. Most of my life, for sure. And uh, it has through, I went through phases and still am. It's evolving. As you move to the future, you constantly need to adapt to your situation. And your needs as a young person changes as you reach the age of 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 120. It will still evolve, but the principles do not change. So in my mind, it was always, the warrior diet was created on the concept of intermittent fasting, which I early on realized it's kind of stress or hardship that we biologically evolved to thrive upon and benefit from that. So the whole idea is to trigger mechanism within you that keep you in shape, not in shape muscle-wise, in shape to better survive, less age, keep your brain always young until the end. There is no reason, in my opinion, to suffer from dementia. People should not die from dementia. I put it serious research about it and explanation in my last book, The Seven Principles of Stress. Yeah, I think it's very... True in the sense that uh, in the modern world, especially like we are very like, you know, easy to kill <laughs> or like, you know, most people wouldn't be able to survive in nature for a long time. And they're very like, you know, fragile in that sense. So they're, you know, evolutionarily or 
in our past, we did evolve under different kinds of physiological environmental stressors, like, you know, high amounts of exercise was included there, or, you know, like, you know, still movement and, uh, you know, lifting stuff or climbing and periods of famine and uh, fasting and, you know, cold heat, all those things were part of our everyday lives in the past. And like in the modern world, we're like lacking in that. And you can see that, you know, most people are somewhat, you know, not resilient at all. And they're, you know, fragile. And a lot of the kind of diseases also come uh, from even from like lack of this positive uh, stress. I, I agree with you. It is very clear to see that this approach is very anti-industrial because our society is really fed by all these non-stop new product. Many of them are made with sugar. Many of them shorten your life, but they look so friendly and cozy. Who don't want, who, who don't want it? Who doesn't want cakes and cookies and ice cream and all this stuff? And even the so-called health products, generally loaded with sugar. It is so easy to fall into denial because taste is addictive. Sugar, pleasure, hit the same receptors, crack cocaine in your brain, opioid receptors, make you addicted. So in life, it's really a matter of choice. Choose who you want to be. Are you ready to trade off your life for a cookie? Or are you ready to trade off your life for living long mm. and beat the aging process? Mm. Yeah. In the past, people did not live that long, but they just yeah, die young. They, they died because of injury, war, famine, accidents. They didn't even have a chance to live long, and many wild animals, the same thing. So the whole idea of us aging for so long is new. But what is becoming clear for many years already, that hardship blocked the aging process, that lack of energy, not excess energy, trigger mechanism to keep you young. And while all this industry, pharmaceutical industry, trying to find the miracle molecule that will keep you young, and it's so attractive to people, oh, there is one molecule. It used to be a resveratrol, then it's an uh, nicotinamide riboside, and other molecules, so-called, that keep you young. There is no shortcut. There's no one molecule that can do it. It's the principle. It's the way you behave. This is the way God created us. We are under test. We are constantly tested. Not just tested to survive hardship, which is constantly coming upon us. If, if somebody told you that life's supposed to be easy, they're lying. There's always a problem. There's always a challenge to face. But you can find a way to understand the principle. If you have a faith in nature, if you have a faith in God, you should be humble enough to understand and try to learn who you are and what kind of lifestyle will benefit you, not just physically, also spiritually. Make you a better person. Be in control, less addicted to substance, more in control. Yeah, that's yeah, very powerful. And uh, I think that, you know, these kinds of, let's say, the voluntary stressors and hardships, like whatever they can be, they do teach you a lot of, you know, about being disciplined and having more self-control and uh, which in turn can have like a huge uh, impact on your other areas of life as well. Like, you know, you're maybe more disciplined in your work or uh, whatever your purpose uh, that you're chasing and yeah. It's like a, yeah, like a man, because if you like give into the temptations, then, you know, you're teaching your brain to be less, you know, disciplined and uh, more eager to give in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything is about training. Everything is about training. They say, you know, when uh, there's a good and bad side was created in this world, yin and yang, opposite things, but we can't be so agreeable with this, because some bad is so bad that it must be fought. You can't just accept things as good and bad, let's move, let's just do nothing. We do have instinct. We do have instinct to forgive, and we do have instinct to fight back and push back. Very important. So when you see things that are wrong, 
And if you cannot change it to the society, change it about yourself. Become your own model. Make your priorities. And it's coming, the details are very important. I believe today that your diet and lifestyle should be as simple as possible. Things are going to be complicated anyway. Mm. Keep it frugal, keep it simple. If you eat one main meal per day, that's already a way to simplify things. But even every day, ask yourself, what makes me feel and look and perform best? Not just physically, mentally. So you have carbohydrates fuel, you have fat fuel, and you cannot mix them. They don't mix well together. You also have food that God created that work to cleanse you, remove toxin. They are very, very important, have been used by humans and animals for so many years. Yeah. Animals, yes. Mm. I don't know. Do you have a dog or maybe or a cat? Yeah, I have a dog, yeah. You have a dog? What kind of? It's a, it's a Belgium uh, shepherd. Oh, that, I had a dog. A black one? Um, or no, sorry. It's the, um, what's it called? Uh, Malino, Malinois. <laughs> That's that one. What's the color? It's also like, a, it's this uh, beige. Beige? beige? Okay. Uh, it looks like a shepherd? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful animal. So if you take him outside, you can see that he's going to eat grass. Mm. Now, why would a predator like him that live on meat, no grain, no... Why would he eat grass? Why are they attracted to it? Mm. Because there are nutrients in grass and plants, not animals, that are unmatched with the ability to keep you in shape, to keep you young, mm. to protect you, yeah, and a lot of the, a lot of those uh, also have these, I don't know, like stress molecules, as you could call them, that uh, also cause like this more positive stress uh, on the body, which is like the scientific term is called the xenohormesis. That uh, yes, correct. They mimic the impact of hormesis on your body. Mm. Many of them are deterrent. They are bitter. They were meant to actually reject insects or other animals. To protect the plant but these toxics actually work for us and if we develop a taste for that even better most people don't like so much bitter and herby you can mm. develop a taste for that they are critical mm. rosemary thyme oregano many seeds yeah i'd like i'd like to move a bit uh a, a few steps back to also cover like you know we talked about the stress and importance of this hardship on health, but like maybe also explain people shortly, like, you know, why is that so? Why is this hormesis as like this small positive stress on the body? Like, why is it beneficial and why kind of we need it to be healthy? Are there question to why? Only God knows why he <laughs> created this world, but it does exist the phenomena of hormesis. That means that stress can benefit you up to a certain point. Benefit you by triggering mechanism in your body and system that are extremely powerful to preserve your body, to keep you great. We are talking about cellular factor like AMPK. We are talking about um, heat shock protein system which is incredibly powerful to search and destroy anything bad in your body, including cancer. And you don't need to go to take medicine or to do it like every, every only time that when you have a crisis. You should do it every single day. You should activate hormesis via exercise and nutrition to make sure that your body is challenged properly the way it's designed to. We don't know why we were created this way. This is way too much. We just know that it's a fact. That's the way it is. And it's very anti-industrial. I really believe that if you do follow a diet that is very low in carbohydrate, it should still be intermittent fasting. And fasting alone, I don't know if people understand, fasting alone create more ketogenic effect than all these diets and products that they are buying. 
So no need for the extra fat and no need to starve yourself out of your favorite food. Avoid fruits which are critical for your survival and avoid nutrients that God provided you and just reject it because somebody creates some theory about the ketogenic diet. And the guy who really created, one of the founders of the ketogenic approach, Professor Cahill, if you read his early writing, he's worried that people will turn into a diet. That diet was created to prevent dementia or epilepsy, epileptic attack among children. Hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So that's why he created, and he was very concerned about the side effects. In my opinion, he was one of the greatest scholars that existed. But today, everything is commercialized. I came with the first concept of intermittent fasting about 22 years ago. In my first book, I show the ratio, rationale behind one meal per day to stay with the cycle of the 24 hours. It is true that this junk food is everywhere and people are more like, you know, yeah, it's like hardwired into them to want it. And uh, it's also like, you know, the environment we live in is very so simple and you can just get it everywhere, this junk food, and you don't have to like exert any like effort or any calories. You don't have to burn calories to get <laughs> calories in that sense. Correct. And There's no more a uh, struggle. There's no more gathering, mm. let alone hunting. I no longer eat animals. I mean mammals or birds. I love animals, I stopped eating them many years ago. And I'm still convinced that this is a good thing. Not just spiritually humane, it's also healthy. There's yeah, like excess consumption of um, everything that aren't really needed. And uh, when we look at, you know, basic physiology, then you know, like obesity is bad and like excess, anything is pretty bad for the body. and. Uh, yeah, like just moderation, obviously, probably is the key when it comes to food that, you know, you're not overeating. And that's where you're, uh, you know, maintaining your health for the longest and slowing down the aging process as well. And, you know, when your body is forced to, when your body is under this, you know, small stress, uh, whether that be eating one meal a day or res restricting certain uh, food groups or reducing calorie consumption overall, then, uh, yeah, you know, you your body still wants to survive and uh, given that your body has plenty of like let's say resources and means to survive like you know you have fat stores you have different ketogenic pathways etc that uh, increase this hardness of the body or hardening and um, yeah clear out dysfunctional cell parts that are just you know dragging down the body during this stress then uh, yeah it makes sense why these positive stresses are so beneficial that uh, your body is like a forced to survive and remove all the excess, whether that be excess body fat or excess, uh, you know, dysfunctional cell parts and mitochondria and everything that is, you know, kind of <laughs> not needed. In, so in how is your personal diet? Uh, well, do, you, do you eat meat? Uh, yeah, I do eat it. Um, I also hunt myself. So uh, you hunt. what kind of animal do you hunt? I hunt, um, I mean, in here where I live, there's mostly deer and uh, moose and uh, wild boars. I also pretty much grow vegetables in my own garden and um, I have chickens where, where I get uh, eggs. I see like a cyclical uh, ketogenic diet. So like I cycle carbs based on my like exercise and those kind of things. But I do, well, from the intermittent fasting side, I do uh, intermittent fasting with a like a, one meal a day predominantly but i also have during the daytime when i'm like exercising i have like some uh, protein like a whey protein shake or something to help with the uh basically strength training that's the main reason that i do it and that helps me to like progress at the gym and uh, still eat like one meal a day so i i, I like focus a lot on um, the goals of um you know if i'm trying to like maximize from an exercise standpoint then i'm consuming more anabolic foods, quote unquote, that have more leucine and uh, more more protein that would stimulate more mTOR, which is the growth pathway in the body. I can see the size of your muscle. You've got big muscle of you on you, my friend. 
Yeah, more well, than you had last time that we talked. Yeah, sure. That was like you know five years. That's ago. maybe why I couldn't recognize you. <laughs> yeah, that's I think part of the reason for sure. Uh, and on the other days where I'm not exercising, then I'm choosing more, yeah, like catabolic foods or foods that have less leucine and less amino acids, more, more plant-based actually, like more um, like beans and stuff so that I would uh, keep the mTOR lower and insulin lower and kind of dig, or dig deeper into more the AMPK pathway as uh, so a cycle between AMPK and mTOR modes, basically. If I'm trying to build or recover from exercise, then I use mTOR with more uh, protein and carbohydrates. And if I'm like resting and uh, going in more like anti-aging mode, then I'm yeah like re restricting carbs and eating more plant-based. So you cycle everything basically. Yes, I have like actually helped to co-found a plant-based protein, which is made of hemp seeds and pea protein, which is like this kind of granule that is actually twice the, the, the amount of protein than beef. And uh, yeah, it's like Estonian made that we co-founded. And uh, and how do you eat it exactly in a shake? No, it's uh, like this granola, like a granola thing. It's it's like oh, I got you. You can chew it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a crunchy thing. You you moisturize it in water. It absorbs the liquid, and it becomes like minced meat almost. So uh, yeah, I'm actually co-founding that, and we're scaling that up. We're in actually in a few restaurants in Estonia here, and we're expanding to Finland and the other Baltics. So yeah, I got you. <laughs> Hemp is also very good for the environment from the uh, you know uh, environmental impact side. I got you. I'm not so much familiar with Bosnia, right? Estonia. <laughs> Estonia, sorry. The kind of uh, plantation or vegetation that you have there. But I'm sure it is good. You probably have some good berries there. Yeah, we have blueberries and cranberries mostly and blackberries. And obviously we can grow our own like currants and cherries and raspberries and strawberries and those things. Do you grow your own? Yeah, we have uh, strawberries and raspberries, cherries, currants. And yeah, I eat those uh, quite a lot and freeze them for the winter. <laughs> really? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. That's it. How long is your summer or springtime? How many months do you have? Uh, well, I mean, the summer, it's, let's say the warm months of the year can be like from May until September. So, you know, five months. Um, the actual super warm months, like, you know, summer months are only yeah, three, June, July, and August, but uh, August and September are still pretty warm. After that, it becomes, you know, like you still have to wear a jacket uh, if you go outside. So when you freeze your summer yield, you collect enough for the whole winter? Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, well, it depends on how much I would eat. <laughs> like I could eat, you know, I don't know, three cups of berries in one sitting if i want to <laughs> or uh but uh, i do kind of ration it out a little bit um so uh i don't know at least every summer we usually stock stock up on uh, maybe like i don't know 10 liters of berries in the fr fridge or something freezer. i got you yeah so you've got a big freezer then yeah i have like i don't know four four freezers <laughs> nice nice and uh how, do you exercise every day i do something every day yeah like i I do like resistance training, strength focused. Like my mo main, mo main focus in training is strength and power. Uh, so like fast twitch muscle fibers. And I do that maybe three times a week and or th four times at max. And uh, three times a week I do like cardio or something. And yeah, w one day maybe I have for rest. But uh, on that day, I also like, you know, I don't know, maybe go for a longer walk or cycle, maybe something like that. And how long is each session? Uh, well, they're usually actually like maybe 45 minutes max, uh, 45 minutes to an hour at most. Yeah. What time of the day you usually exercise? In the afternoon, like uh, 3, 3 to 5 p.m., somewhere between there. I got you. Yeah. And, and I, during I, the day, you have another. What kind of walk do you do during the day? Uh, well, I'll walk. Just regular walk in uh, nature, um, maybe like thirty minutes an hour, so something like that. Usually around noon. In the mornings, I work, you know, on the computer. I have like you know treadmill desk as well under which I can walk <laughs> while working. Uh, so I walk like that, and uh, I do go outside as well for a walk. And uh, yeah, I work out in the afternoon, and eat around six p.m. 
So your podcast is part of your kind of job. It's like yeah. a routine. Yeah. Every day. The work I, I you know, the work I do is consecration. I uh, research, I write, I uh, yeah, make videos. Yeah, everything really do that. I have like clients and those kind of things. I got you. Have you have been doing it for how long? Uh maybe you know six years. Six years I've been, you know, starting with online presence, but uh the last maybe four years has it become more like a full time thing. I got you. And you tell the world about your experience? Yeah, I my experience, uh, what I learn, um uh, what I, and yeah, what kind of things I do, everything related to that. But what Fantastic. about you? Yeah, what about you? Like, what is your, what, what's the, you know, let's maybe start with, like, what's the archetypal warrior diet routine? What, what does it look like? And uh, maybe how do you do it yourself? In the past uh, several years, I was off the grid, basically, because I was working to innovate some solutions, products that could present solution, and I told you, that's already in the process. Yeah, I'm not such a good person as you are. Definitely not that social. And yes, I, I keep reevaluating everything I wrote or done before. I see things today very different than 22 or 30 or 40 years ago. And I said it before and I'll say it again. It's not just carbohydrates, fats, or whatever you put nutrient in your body. It's your mind. How do you nourish it? It's your capacity to generate mercy. Yes, push back and fight back, but also give, share, be generous. And after that, and with all this coming, the lifestyle and the diet and everything else, so you need to take it to consideration, in my opinion. And you know, it's, it's, it's funny when I think about it, because in the past, religious people, those very dedicated, the pious, you know, they deliberately used to deprive themselves. Fasting and hardship self-inflicted was deliberately done. So it's deep-rooted in our genes. To be aware of this. Sim, when, when you exercise and beat yourself, okay, you feel after the exercise the compensation. Mm. <laughs> yes. You feel the release of stress, the release of junk and excess that coming out of you, spiritually, not just physically. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's a good way to, you know, uh... I mean, yeah, like you do exert yourself, but you actually feel more energized and more, you know, obviously there's, you know, many brain benefits and mood boosting benefits you get from exercise. And I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it is funny that exercise is considered like an uncomfortable thing, but, uh, you know, our body is, is, you know, still hardwired to be, you know, let's say addicted to it or get some positive associations from it like if you exercise and you feel great afterwards then it does you know hardwire you to keep on doing it although it is causing your body some stress and <laughs> uncomfortable uh, things in the short term it's very stressful many times and very uncomfortable but it releases you from pop from junk mm. spiritual junk you feel different after that you feel cleansing on the mind too not just the body the body actually helps you break it. Sometimes you need, it's almost like an injury, you need to recover. But the mind, it's the best thing you can do. So imagine all this that you do on a daily basis in a magnitude of thousands can happen. Mm. The kind of experience and clearness an elevation that you can have on the spiritual side, not just the body side. The body will follow. Everything start here, the body follow, not in the body. 
We believe and taught by the industry that if we pop a pill, it affects the brain. Of course it affects the brain. But it's a brain that makes you pop the pill. It's all start there. Yes, coffee is great, in my opinion, for the brain, but it's your brain that has to choose it and how to do it. So how, how do you, how does the, yeah, how, how does a day of, let's say, a warrior diet, if someone is interested in trying it out, like how does it work? Like how long do you need to fast? Uh, when do you exercise? What kind of foods would you eat? And uh, that kind of thing. Don't take me as an example. <laughs> Because I shifted into the extreme of water fasting. My, I, I feel like I need nothing else. Okay. I even exercise on empty. I feel it big time. But the benefit is outstandingly better. And no, I'm not suffering. I, I, I would suffer if you forced me to eat during the day now. It's just this is how deep the switch is. It's very difficult for me once in a while we go to, you know, vacation, Hawaii or whatever, Ever, I start to eat even some stuff during the day, like fruits or something that I didn't eat before. I feel the difference. So adaptation, in my opinion, is virtually total. But in my book, I say you don't have to follow it this way. There are things that you allow that can even benefit you during the day, especially fruits or veggies. It's unlimited the amount of veggies that you can eat. There is nothing wrong with green. But don't drink it. Chew food. Don't drink food. Period. Right. <laughs> Activate your saliva. Make sure the nitric oxide cycle, alternative cycle hit your system. Get the beneficial anti-inflammatory effect. So between this and fasting, it's a trade-off again. Both have its benefit. For me, I try to make things simple. Look, I'm not trying to be big anymore, but I keep try to keep my muscle in a good shape. So my exercise is still intense, but I shorten it. I build my home gym. I have my boxing gym, and I do it every single day. Nice. Sometimes more or less, but usually no more than 30 minutes a day. Again, on empty, you really feel it. But for me, it works. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, exercise is kind of vital for, yeah, slowing down aging. Like you, if you stop exercising and stop moving, then your body just begins to deteriorate. <laughs> so, yeah, you, given you're over 70 and you're still exercising every day, then, yeah, that's, you know, goes to show like why you have good longevity. <laughs> Well, it's really a matter of adaptation. Refusal to accept that aging is an inevitable disease and trial and error, honestly. Mm. Yeah, so, so to recap, then the warrior diet would be you eat one meal a day, uh, but during the daytime you can like snack on like a few of these, let's say, stress molecule foods like uh, coffee and uh, berries and some vegetables and uh, fruit. Correct. Food. You don't want to over... The one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to tax the digestion with slow digesting food. You don't want it. Mm. You want to be as clean as possible and maximize the detox effect that your body has during the day. Your body is very good in throwing away toxin, elimination. You don't want to go to the opposite direction. It's the night that is the time to load. And if you keep this cycle properly, you're going to do very well. Mm. It's emptying and replenishment. Removal, emptying of energy, activating all the mechanisms that keep you in shape and young. Mm. And compensating at night. And when your glycogen is empty, you can virtually do anything. <laughs> this anti-aging compound, the AMPK, is so strongly affecting you at this point. Your insulin is in a peak sensitivity. Mm. So even if you screw around and cheat and this, somehow your body will survive. It. If, however, you add big meals before that, every excess, anything else you do, yeah. even a healthy protein bar will be detrimental to you. <laughs> so here it is. You can see people 
who eat not ideal food, cakes once in a while, cookies and this and that, pass, whatever, and they still look well and do well. And there are people who are constantly on a diet, constantly checking, constantly checking, and nothing working for them. Mm. Yeah, so because they are missing the cycle. Scene. Yeah, yeah. So they are like you know their their metabolism is slightly broken because of you know overeating and being on the history of a bad diet, and uh, you know and they're going on a diet doesn't fix their broken metabolism directly. So they need if to fix the metabolism, then they need to basically shut do like a re system reboot, <laughs> which involves activating. They don't do the reboot. You're right. You put yeah, it very yeah, crude. Yeah, no, yes, the there is no reboot. Yeah. Every day you need to kind of reboot your metabolism. <laughs> Crisis management from the morning. So the morning is a diet breakfast. Mm. Then come diet this, a diet snack, a diet lunch. And if they want to be more sophisticated, they say, okay, it's intermittent fasting, two meals a day. They forget the principle. Or they are in denial, they don't want to understand. So they are thrown into this vicious cycle of hell of dieting. Hmm. I honestly don't think we should diet. I think we should live instinctually. Hmm. Eat what we like. Train yourself. Build taste to things that fit you. Hmm. Yeah. When I eat nuts or pistachios, I enjoy it. I honestly do. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes calorie intake per day can easily exceed the 2,000, 2,500. And still, the body is lean. Mm. Yeah. People don't understand it. You can have a diet of 800 or 1,200 calories a day and still be soft. Or, to, or over 2,000, 2,500 and still be lean. Keep the cycle, understand the principle. To recap again, then, uh, first, basically exert your body, put your body under this positive stress, which involves you know, fasting every day and uh, maybe consuming coffee and uh, these other stress foods, clean hormetic foods, exercising. And then when you eat, when you break the fast, then you're like recovering and restore, you know, rejuvenating the body from that. Yes. Yes. You can be perfect and you could be less perfect. You're still going to do so much better than otherwise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, it's very, very important to understand it. And I cannot emphasize it more that we need to enjoy our life. Mm. We cannot just beat ourselves nonstop. Yeah. Uh, when it comes so, to, when it comes to hormesis and your know, stress in general, there's there's obviously um, you can overdo it. So uh, you can overexercise. You can overfast. You can over. That's very true. Very okay. very. So true. how do you differentiate? Like how much is too much, and where do you gonna find the sweet spot? Well, that's part of the um, phenomena of homesis. Everything is pre-designed and it's really very individual. But I do believe that we need to keep remembering that God created this world with day and night. Sun during the day, moon during the night, with cycles of themselves. We can't ignore the 24-hour cycle and how it affects us and animals. So our diet must be tightly connected to the 24 hours. So the circadian rhythms. So I believe that if you exceed fasting to this uh, 48 hours, uh, you basically betray the, whole, the principle of hormesis. Mm. Yeah, it may work. You may get some result, as research show. But the result and the statistics show that people on every other day fasting or exceeding fa long fasting, find it very difficult. They get very agitated, extremely stressed. It's chronic stress, basically. They, they, they cannot sleep. So as a matter of lifestyle routine, it's absolutely no, no. Because as much as stress is positive and can cause you to be better and younger, and better shape, it can also kill you. When it becomes chronic, it shatters everything good in your body. Mm. It shatters, it makes you insensitive. You respond to 
press itself is being diminished. It's shuttered and destroyed the endocrinical system. Too much cortisol wipe your brain. Yeah. We need to understand it. The cycle of life is a cycle. Yeah. Every day. We need to sleep every day because if we don't, we pay the consequences. Don't overbeat yourself. Forgive yourself. Have mercy for yourself too, not just for others. Hmm. And you're going to do very well. So don't overdo it. Don't overdo the... Uh... Don't overdo nothing. No. What's the point? If once in a while you need to fight for your life and starve yourself for three days, most likely with your background sim, you're going to do it better than others. But not as a routine. This is wrong. Don't listen to people who put you in weird routine of chronic that has anything chronic inside. We don't do nothing well on anything chronic. Only intermittent. Yeah, and I... instinct. Listen to your instinct. Yeah, maybe it's sometimes it feels intuitive to go for a 48 hour fast or longer. But if it doesn't feel or if you are like, you know, have to push yourself super hard to do that, then obviously you may be going against your uh, body's needs in a given moment. So, yeah, you need to kind yeah, of once in a while it happened to anyone. It happened to me. I was stuck in a situation. I had to go for more than 48 hours. It's very difficult, though. I don't know about you. If you tried, I felt agitated. There's no need, but there's no need. There's no serious benefit to this. And don't fall trap to the study about the mice that they did on mice. This every other day fasting that they fasted for 24 hours and it don't fall to this trap. Mice are not humans. You don't have a brain of a mouse. Your tolerance to stress is different. Your range of choices, you're predetermined and designed to make choices that mice don't. So comparing constantly human to mice is a horrible mistake. We are not rotten, we don't eat like them, and we don't live like them. But if we choose to, yes, we can be any animal that you choose. Human can be rotten, you can, can even behave like cockroaches. But when your spirit and your mind and your faith is priority, you will never allow yourself to be reduced to this level. I mean, our bodies haven't changed a lot. <laughs> so our physiology hasn't changed a lot uh, for thousands of years. So um, yeah, I guess we have to still follow the same principles for sure. Yeah, listen, evolution. Yes, they talk about evolution. It's very, very important how we evolved. But we can also evolve to be homo chemicals. Sim, I don't know if you're aware, but I had clients in the past, and they used to eat junk, and they were obese, and they were happy. They seem happy. They accepted themselves, but were they really happy? You can adapt to anything. Even uh, like, <laughs> even if you are like you know, eating out of uh, some sort of emotional stress or depression or whatever, you're overeating because of that. That's also like an adaptation. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, yes, compensation, mm. whatever you call it. The thing is this, we have a mind and we have a spirit and we have a soul and it always needs to be the leader. So it's not just explanation and words like evolution, adaptation, they're towards what direction? What is your choice? Who do you want to be? I think I said it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a great way, a place to end as well. And uh, yeah, I think we gave up a pretty good overview about, you know, to summarize, then, yeah, your body benefits from small stress and you need to have it to stay healthy. And it does like slow down aging or turns on these anti aging pathways in the body. Um, and uh, yeah, different ways to achieve that, primarily through you know, exercise and some of aspects of, you know, fasting and uh, yeah being moderate in your calorie consumption essentially also as well to not to not overeat i agree and listen i wish you good luck with the podcast and spreading your message and keep me posted on your own personal evolution too how you evolve with us <laughs> of course yeah I'll definitely do that 
uh well yeah it was a great uh talking with you if not sooner than maybe like in five years again <laughs> we can do another post- podcast but uh, hopefully sooner good luck with everything and thank you for inviting me and we'll be in touch yeah likewise. thank you very much sim good luck all right that's it for this episode make sure to click a like and subscribe leave us a review on itunes stay tuned for the next episode stay empowered